Welcome back. In this lecture, I will show you different types of inductors. There are different types of inductors used in a wide range of applications. The choice of inductors depends on specific requirements of your design, including inductance value, current rating, size, and the frequency of operation for various applications. Also, different types of inductors are designed just to optimize these characteristics to better fit in your application. Each of these different types has some special uses and applications. Now I will show you a few commonly used inductors. The first one is air core inductor. As their name implies, air core inductor does not use a magnetic core resulting in the high Q or quality factor and the lowest possible losses for high frequency applications. It has coils wound on plastic, ceramic, or other non-magnetic forms, as well as those that have only air inside the windings. Air core inductors has high Q, or so-called quality factor, and the lowest possible losses for high frequency applications. Also, it has high reliability for space, military, and other critical applications. However, air core inductors have lower inductance than ferromagnetic core coils. Here is an example of an air core inductor from Coilcraft. This is a small surface mount inductor with excellent Q factor up to 230 at 400 MHz. The typical Q or quality factor versus frequency is shown in this picture. You can see different curves of Q factor under different inductance. High Q factor means less power loss. Generally, air core inductor has relatively low inductance. In this particular family, the inductance ranges from 47 nanohenry to 500 nanohenry. For now, it's okay if you don't fully understand these curves. I will teach you the basic parameters in the datasheet in the following lectures. Magnetic core inductor is the most commonly used type of inductor in power applications. As you can see here, we have a winding. We have a current flowing through the winding to generate the magnetic field by adding a piece of ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic material in the center of the coil. By doing so, we can increase the magnetic field by hundreds or thousands of times, thanks to the higher magnetic permeability of the core. This is called a magnetic core, as shown as two pieces. One piece is a C shape, the second piece is a I shape. The magnetic core is the heart of a power inductor. However, the magnetic properties of the core material will cause several side effects that can alter the behavior of the inductor so that it requires special design considerations. There are two types of magnetic shielding of magnetic core inductors. The first one is unshielded inductor. The second one is shielded inductor. Unshielded inductors have a magnetic routing core made up of air, meaning its magnetic lines are entirely exposed to the air without any magnetic shielding. For example, the picture on the left shows the rod leg and the drum leg cause of unshielded inductors. Unshielded inductors have an open magnetic circuit. Magnetic flux induced in the core by the current in the winding exits the core and extends through the air to the other side of the core where it completes the flux pass. Unshielded inductor with the same size and shielded one usually has higher saturation current, small volume, and lower cost. However, as we said, the magnetic flux outside the core influences nearby circuits. It's more likely to have the EMI issues. EMI stands for electromagnetic interference. With unshielded inductor, the core windings are typically exposed or otherwise magnetically non-shielded. Generally speaking, they have the worst performance from EMI perspective. On the right-hand side, we have the shielded inductor. It is designed in a way that magnetic flux never leaves the core, preventing the flux from interfering with sensitive circuits nearby. Shielded inductors are manufactured to fully encapsulate the coil in a form of magnetic shielding. Shielded inductor with the same size and the same inductance as unshielded one has lower DC resistance, lower saturation current, 
and higher cost. To further illustrate different types of magnetic shielding, let's look at this slide from MPS. There are three different cross sections as shown here. We have unshielded inductor, semi shielded inductor, and fully shielded inductor. From this illustration, you can tell that the unshielded inductor has a large amount of magnetic flux leakage exposed to the air. On the right hand side, the fully shielded inductor has the minimal flux leakage in the air, which is the best for the EMI. Here is an example of electromagnetic radiation from the inductor in a buck converter. A buck converter is a switch mode power supply. The buck converter has the power input from a bench DC power supply. The output power goes to a resistive load at output terminal. The electromagnetic probe is measuring the electromagnetic radiation of the inductor in the frequency from 100 kHz to 30 MHz. This is caused by the switching frequency and the harmonics. If we look at the high frequency from 30 MHz to 1 GHz, the emission are caused by the ringing frequency of the parasitics in the circuit and also their harmonics. For this reason, the electromagnetic radiation is more dependent on the shielding characteristics of the core material, switching frequency, and the transitions of the switching circuit. Here are the result from a RF spectrum analyzer. The conclusion from the figure is the shielded inductor has the lowest electromagnetic radiation plotted in light blue. The unshielded inductor has the largest amount of radiation plotted in black. Here is another type of inductor called toroidal core inductor. It uses a toroidal core or a donor-shaped ferro core. There are two types of core materials. The first one is gapped ferro cores. The second one is powder cores. The advantage of the toroidal core is that, due to its symmetry, the amount of magnetic flux that escapes outside the core is very limited, potentially making it more efficient and less EMI. Toroidal inductors and transformers are used in a wide range of electronic circuits, such as power supplies, inverters, and amplifiers. The windings are wound around the toroidal core or donor-shaped core of the ferret. A higher magnetic field and the inductance can be achieved by forming the core in a closed magnetic circuit. And also, the magnetic field does not leave the core material, which stays in the core. This will cause less EMI issues in the surrounding circuit. There are different types of mounting for inductors. For example, on the left-hand side, we have through-hole inductors. These inductors can be soldered on the PCB using the through-hole legs. On the right-hand side, we have surface mount inductors. Their pipes are soldered to the PCB to create an electrical connection. For high power and high voltage applications, we can have chassis mount inductors. The terminals are connected to a big cable or bus bar for carrying high current. You may notice small wires coming out of the inductor. Actually, they are semesters or thermocouple cables for monitor the temperature in a real-time fashion. Here we have another type of mounting called planar magnetics. This is a low-profile design that are often used for high-density power converters. The PCB traces on multiple layers are used as winding to carry the current. The two pieces of planar cores are clamped together to close the magnetic path. The planar method can be used for different types of magnetics, including inductors, transformers, flyback transformers, and more. The advantages of planar magnetics are small size, low profile, excellent temperature characteristics, low leakage inductance, excellent repeatability properties, and small tolerance. And also, it does not need any additional windings. Therefore, the manufacturing process can become much easier. Recap. In this lecture, we go through different types of inductors, including air core inductors, magnetic core, toroidal core, and also we talk about different mounting types. Here's the reference for this lecture. Thank you and see you next time.